U.S. turns to domestic extremism as new counterterrorism focus. This article came out April 15th, 9.48 a.m. While insisting that al-Qaeda has been shattered as an anti-U.S. threat, American officials are reportedly struggling to invent a new counterterrorism policy with domestic extremism mentioned as a new focus. The threat from al-Qaeda and the potential for a massive coordinated attack on the U.S. may be diminished, but the jihadist movement is more diffuse, says the director of U.S. National Intelligence, James Clapper, at a congressional hearing on Thursday, as quoted in the L.A. Times report on Monday. Lone wolves, domestic extremists, and jihad-inspired affiliated groups are de still determined to attack Western interests. So when he talks about Western interests, he's talking about global corporations that act as if they're American. Uh, they're not talking about the individual tax slave. So... Citing U.S. military officials, the report says, as a result of the assassination drone strikes and other counterterrorism operations by the CIA, Mossad, and MI6, all of them, Al-Qaeda has been so eviscerated that the U.S. intelligence agencies no longer fully understand the organizational structure below its nominal leader. Well, they know something, like I said before, because they're funding jihadists. Um, they're arming them and funding them and training them in Syria to kill and blow up uh, people, innocent civilians, including children. So says here how to turn a world lacking in enemies into the most threatening place in the universe. Talking about all this hype that's going on with North Korea. Now all of a sudden they've, they've calmed down with that, right? They've calmed down with that. Well, let's see. Let's see how you make uh, this so, th so uh, threatening of a place, right? You keep the people in fear. You never let them, you never let them get, uh, you know, let their guard down. You always got to keep them on their toes. So it's just, uh, it's heart-wrenching to have to cover this crap all the time. Three dead, 130 injured as blast strikes Boston Marathon finish line. I'm sure most of you, unless you live under a rock, probably don't know about this. But um, it says here, at least three people have been killed and more than 130 injured when two explosions shattered America's oldest and most prestigious marathon, the Boston Marathon, as runners crossed the line. So, so it says, you can go in there and check out all the gory details. The mainstream media is doing a really good job of that. Um, but it goes on there and says how the people are all in shock. They didn't really move. They just look all dazed out. So federal officials say it's a terrorist attack. So federal law enforcement officials called today's fatal explosions a terrorist attack but said it wasn't clear whether it was domestic or foreign group behind it. So CNN. Meanwhile, speculation, dread, and political agendas are swirling around the Internet. So Slate notes that Patriot's Day connection, reporting that other, other major attacks occurred on or around the holiday, including the Columbine school shooting, the Oklahoma City bombing, and the Waco assault. So I didn't know that. So it's here, in fact, Waco inspired anti-government activists to hold their own darker version of Patriot's Day. The NRA is the authority for gun owners. Alex Jones is going to be the authority for the 10%, the engineer 10% to rise up and revolt against the system and play into their hands. Uh, whoever the culprit, no religion justifies this act of violence. We must remain united against extremism. And this was coming the head of the Muslim Writers Guild of America. Police have video of suspect dropping bombs in trash cans. So it goes on here, says, from a cop friend in Boston, a former partner says there was a reporter at the hospital in Boston. She overheard police saying that they have video of the suspect dropping bombs into the garbage cans. Cops will never admit that they have a suspect in, con in custody until they are ready. If they call him a suspect, you must read him as Miranda writes. So, authorities ID person of interest as Saudi national in marathon bombings under guard at Boston Hospital. So it doesn't really matter who they have as a suspect. If he is working for intelligence agencies, whether, you know, most likely black ops. Um, they're going to let these people go right away, like a lot of these shooters. The, the, the first person of interest is most likely the person that's actually responsible, but they let them go because I don't know if it's their handler that talks to the local authorities because, you know, they're not in the know. Like they thought it was all the drill. So everybody's just dazed and confused, but out of the, ca out of the chaos, out of the ashes, the agenda moves forward. So an agenda of fear control i just uh you know it's like it's not funny but it's just like i i just i couldn't you know i heard saudi and i just kind of laughed i'm just like are you, are you kidding me are you i mean seriously are you kidding me a saudi national you know are quote allies right this is my website ggnonline.com and on youtube ddarko2012 ddarko2013 i'd like to thank those who have donated i appreciate it very much all right so i'm going to keep moving here uh we have why homegrown terrorism is hard to stop from April 15, 2013. So it remains too soon to know who's behind Monday's attack near the finish line of the Boston Marathon, though law enforcement authorities say they are treating it as a terrorist or terrorism investigation. 
So they try to determine whether bombings are work of homegrown extremists or whether it was an international operation along the lines of September 11th. So according to Rick Ozzy Nelson, a counterterrorism expert at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, he says here that um, the blast, Monday's blast, suggests the work of a relatively small number of radicalized individuals. I'd be very surprised if this was directed by Al-Qaeda, he says. This isn't the kind of venue they typically attack. Hold on to your uh, chair there because you might roll back and uh, fall out of it. It says here, despite the many improvements in the U.S. intelligence and homeland security since 2001, that's, that's spying basically on you. Um, we are always going to be vulnerable to some degree. George Carlin watched the whole thing about uh, airport security. We live in a free and open society, which means we are always vulnerable to any extremist radical group that wants to perpetrate this kind of thing. So, again, uh, are you kidding me? A Saudi national, um, our allies, um, we lose our freedoms, and they say it's because we're so free. So let's take some more freedoms away got to be fucking kidding me. CNN national security analyst warns of right-wing extremism or extremists behind Boston bombings from April 15th, 2013. So, uh, Peter Bergen told host Jake Tapper on Monday that the explosions could be the work of al-Qaeda terrorists as much as they could be part of a, a planned assault by right-wing extremists. He said reminded of the Oklahoma City bombing and that terrorism of the right could not be ruled out. And it comes off the... This preceding article, April 4th, 2013, growing threat of extreme right-wing uh, right wing violence. Oh, see, so same guy, Peter Bergen. And, and they basically start the article out with this, um, the director of Colorado's prison system who was shot and killed on the eve of passing gun legis anti-gun legislation. So, and that it was done by white, uh, white supremacists. So, so it's your tax deadline, not much of a deadline for most. Here's a little secret for all you procrastinators on tax day. The IRS doesn't like to talk about it, but as long as you don't owe any additional taxes, there is no penalty for filing a few days late. You can go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. Um, I'm just show you, I'm just kind of stress this, that uh, the first thing I thought was April 15th, and they're going to blame this on right-wing extremists. IRS denies using emails to target taxpayers. Less than three days ago, before the federal taxes are due, the IRS is denying claims that it wants to snoop on taxpayers by reading their emails, monitoring other forms of electronic mail. Well, you know that they do. The federal government does. They already do, especially with the Patriot Act. It just gave them legal justification to say, yes, we are spying on you. So, and they go through all your records. Opinion of U.S. government hits record low. So, Americans' opinion of federal government has fallen to a record low, according to a Pew Center. Just 28% of Americans rate the government in Washington favorable, the lowest percentage ever in a Pew survey, and down 5 percentage points from a year ago. So that's what you do. Rally support, right? Obama says bombers will feel the full weight of blind justice. That's right. So he goes, he doesn't know why, uh, who did this or why, but vows whoever is responsible for the explosions will feel the full weight of um, justice. So we'll find out who did this and hold them accountable. So that they would increase uh, security around the United States as necessary, but did not say whether his administration thought the incident was part of a larger plot. This is the thing I want to get to, though. He says that, um, he says, on days like this, there are no Republicans or Democrats. We are Americans united in our concern for our fellow citizens. So, Boston Marathon bombing happened on the same day as controlled explosion drill by Boston bomb squad. So, there's a big red flag that uh, gets uh, goes up here when they hold these drills and exercises around it. Then we have this. Officials, there will be a controlled explosion opposite the library within one minute as part of bomb squad activities. This is the Boston Globe official Twitter feed. You go in there and check it out. So, look at this. Joggers, Illuminati, 1990, 1995 Steve Jackson games. So, I guess these are one of those uh, uh, Illuminati cards. No one ever suspects a harmless jogger. This group gives a, what is this, A plus 2 on any assassination attempt. The group may not be destroyed. University of uh, this cross-country coach who was near the finish line of the Boston Marathon when the explosions went off said he thought it was odd there were bomb-sniffing dogs at the start and finishing lines. They kept making announcements to participants, do not worry, it's just a training exercise. He said he saw local, local law enforcement spotters on the roofs the start of the race. He's been to plenty of marathons, including Chicago, D.C., Chicago, and he says here he's never seen that level of security before. 
purposes. I don't believe that they were just having a training exercise. I think they must have had some sort of suspicion. So, Boston runners were warned. It's a squamish man. He's stunned by explosions but escapes injury in marathon finish line uh, blast. So it goes on here and it says that a woman holding several bags was telling runners who were picking up their pre-race packages in downtown Boston on Saturday, April 13th, that they were going to die if they participated in the event. This is what this Mike Heidegger 59 said. I was downtown on Saturday and, you know, you see these people on the street and it's some nut bar says it was a little creepy because you can identify who the runners are and I heard her say to the runner uh, two feet away from me that if you run tomorrow you're going to die. At that time he thought he was telling the woman that the race was Monday but decided not to correct her. Boston to deploy mass casualty tablet device during marathon. This is from April 12, 2013. Boston EMS Emergency Medical Services is deploying a new off-the-shelf lightweight mobile device for the first time at Boston Marathon on April 15th. The platform from Safety Pad is intended to uh, for use in mass casualty situations, giving EMS personnel, personnel the ability to carry into crowds and assess a patient upon arrival. Boston EMS will utilize the new Android-based program for bike and gator teams along the race route. Next up, security beefed up worldwide after Boston Blast. Police in L.A., New York City, London, Washington, other major cities, um, Babylon's, metropolises, megacities, regions, worldwide stepped up security Monday following explosions. Not a big surprise here. But also, FAA orders no fly zone over Boston explosion site. So, the people thought that the cell phone service was suspended in Boston, but it was overloaded. Remember this from last July 2012 Homeland Security funded study list people reverend of individual liberty as extreme right wing terrorists. So, he might be a terrorist. Don't forget this show, Homeland, the Homeland. So, a Marine Sergeant returns home eight years after going missing in Iraq. It says here a driven CIA officer suspects he might be plotting an attack on America, so infiltrating the ranks. Homeland Security's new $3.9 billion headquarters. Well, don't forget the Utah Spy Center for the NSA. It's huge. It's the largest federal construction project since the big Pentagon rose in the 1940s. I think it was uh, September 11th. Uh, gold has its biggest fall in 30 years. This is some pretty big news. Biggest one-day decline since 1983. What happened the last time we saw gold drop like this? It says here, uh, we haven't seen these uh, two other such instances of hurried selling in the last five years. In 08, gold quickly dropped 21 percent, seemingly preempting the layman debacle and the collapse of Western banking system. In September 11, 2011, uh, gold fell 20 percent in a short period as Europeans or Europe's risk exploded and stocks slumped. Some other news that's going on in the world. Wave of bombings killed 20, wound 195 in Iraq. It was actually 55 that were killed in Iraq in the spat of bomb attacks. Almost 200 injuries. Several blasts rocked Somali capital, killed 34. Uh, Obama regime just uh, started funding uh, the Somali government. They've been recognized. So this is what they get. As many as 34 people have been killed and many more injured in several blasts in Mogadishu. Similar to the Afghan uh, green on blue whatever uh, bombings or attacks it says here men wearing somali military uniforms stormed the courtroom i saw another source that said that it was actually foreigners or not somali so to me that seems like a little operation chemical weapons use in syria heinous crimes as un so comment said uh, killing innocent people with drones is also a heinous crime but i don't hear the un complaining about the use of them u.s drone strike kills five in north waziristan and pakistan missile destroys a house the missile set the house on fire and the bodies were burned beyond recognition within karzai of afghanistan says u.s taliban both to blame for airstrike that killed 12 children last week the u.s won't admit civilians were killed so all of a sudden there was you know missiles pointing to the sky and the, you know it was nuclear holocaust nuclear world war was about to start and then all of a sudden it just died down north korea has no missile capability says the white house uh they're losing in syria now let, they're going to bring it home who knows they might even attach these uh al-qaeda boston bombers uh with syria or iran or hezbollah or something like that uh, guantanamo bay prisoners force fed not allowed to die from hunger strike one inmate said i'll never forget the first time they passed the feeding tube up my nose. I can't describe how painful it is to be force-fed this way. All in the name of terrorism, right? Venezuela election board proclaims Maduro president-elect, so he basically barely won. 
And my apologies for swearing there. It just, it does get to me. It says, news is bad for you and giving up reading will make you happier. It says, news is bad for your health. It leads to fear and aggression and hinders your creativity and ability to think deeply. So for whatever it's worth, I thank you for joining me. This is Gigi and I'm Darko. Thank you.